hello and welcome to episode nine of Cryptid Ramblers. I'm Scott in South End, and my accomplice in all things cryptid is Callum over there in Basildon. Hello, hello. How are you doing, mate? I'm very well, very well. How are you? Yes, yes, mate. Very good. Good very man. Good. I'm pleased to say to yourself yeah. and everyone listening, there have been no high strangeness for me again no. in the past two weeks. No, same. I've uh, seemingly escaped it uh, for, for the time being. Touch yeah. wood, of course, but uh, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing since that that really weird incident. I think it's almost peaked for the time being. So, uh, well, maybe we've uh, we we were on the right track, and then the yeah. last episode we went way off the that, that track, and they way went, "It's off. all right, it's all right, lads, we're leaving." Right, don't worry it. about don't worry about these two plebs. We're all right. Let's go somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> they're going the other way. Let's no, let's, let's no concentrate threat. on this mob over here. That's it. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're no threat they're no to threat. us. We'll leave them. <laughs> Donuts. <laughs> that is exactly it. Isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's exactly what's happened. Yeah, no doubt. Um, <laughs> yeah, so today we are going to be exploring the mythology of the Banshee and oh. attempting to discover its origins. So yeah. Banshee-like entities have been recorded worldwide, um, but we're going to mostly look at the Gaelic mythology more so yeah. than anything. Absolutely, um, yeah. So anyone that doesn't know about the Banshee um, is said to be a herald of death. Uh, but not in the same way that maybe like, Hollywood horror has, has perceived no. it to be. Not like um, no, like, not. like the, the the film The Woman in Black. You know, you mm. you catch sight of the woman in black and a child dies. Yeah. It's it's not that sort of way. It's more so no. something very different to that. So she appears or would have heard or would be heard when a family member has died or will soon pass. Stories of the Banshees have entered modern culture through similar guises as vampires and vengeful spirits. And this, like I said, there's been many, many films out there that have gone along the sort of Banshee sort of um, mythology. Like, um, yeah, that's right. Uh, was uh, La Llorona? Have you heard? Have you seen yeah, that one? I have. Yeah, I have. That's yeah, a pretty it's a good, good film, film actually. It's a good one. Honesty. That does take yeah. a sort of Banshee style. Um, kind of persona, or no, although not directly, of course. But yes, yeah, definitely down that, down that sort of line. The, the only um, kind of pop culture reference I, I knew of, uh, and, and could sort of find really was is the DC X Men superhero Banshee. Um, oh yeah, who literally uses a scream um, as oh, from as, the as Origins their... film. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah the young kid in the Origins film. He uses the scream to fly. I think basically the the sound waves to to, to glide off of and such. glide off the water and that. Yeah, that that was the only uh, reference that that I could uh, that I could find. But yeah, there are, there are. I mean, there's computer games. I think where banshees pop up as the the kind of the end boss. And um, mm. I can see. I can other than other than the X Men, which is kind of a loose reference. I couldn't really find anything. Mm. Where someone's made an actual banshee film. Um, oh, yeah, there's a there's a banshee program, but I don't think it's got anything. It's to got do with absolutely actual nothing to do with banshees. No, no, uh, I didn't really no. look at that. I just saw there was a TV series, and it didn't look anything along those sort of lines. So I didn't. No, it's not. Bother. It couldn't be further from it. Yeah, it's just it just shares the it just shares mm. the name. I think it's because it's the it's a town. Uh, uh, I think it's mythical, like a made up town in the states called Banshee. Ah, and okay, so I'm everything that happens obviously happens in this town. So. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, but so there's no no reference otherwise. Yeah, gotcha. So a banshee is um, a spirit or spectre that is to appear. Mm. Um, her appearance, she often has uh, long streaming hair, um, wears a grey cloak over a green dress, and her eyes are red from continual weeping and crying. Right. Um, right. It does seem it does seem to uh, differ, but with regards to her appearance, like for instance, we've got a first hand account that's... by. And Lane, uh, Lady Fanshawe in her memoirs, which is in the mid-1600s. That's right. So she was dressed in white, had red hair, and had a ghastly complexion. Yeah. Lady Jane Wilde, in the Ancient Legends of Ireland, written in 1888, prov provides another. Yeah. The size of the banshee is another physical feature that differs between regional accounts. Though some accounts of her standing unnaturally tall are recorded, the majority of the tales describe a height state of the Banshee's stature as short, somewhere between one and four feet. Yeah. Her exceptionally short, exceptional shortness often goes alongside her, the description of her as an old woman, though it may actually be intended to emphasise her state as a fairy creature. 
Yeah, I think it ties in more, um, certainly when you read other origins from from other regions as we're going to go into it i think it holds itself more to the the kind of the fey folk in in mm. origin um you know as opposed to you know an old sort of weathered hag um that you find in say this the scottish one i think for example yeah. um but no, i did find that quite interesting actually that that was yeah that the, the, they're either young and beautiful with a pale complexion or they're old weathered and, and sort of haggard hunched over um you know, looking sort of quite un- unwelcoming, really. But yeah, yeah. It, 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 like you say, depending on the region, you'll get a slightly different variation of the, um, you know, of the appearance. Um, mm. But for those that, um, yeah, for those that, that don't know, because I mean, I, I must admit, I wasn't entirely uh, sure myself before uh, diving into this. Um, but Banshee is actually the more modern term um, used for the this creature or this spectre and it's taken from the original old irish word uh benshi or bianshi um there's two different time periods i think ben benshi was the was the first or the earliest uh, uh reference um then that morphed into yeah Bianchi, and then that eventually became what we know now as banshee and and that from what i read i don't know what you found but that's actually the only involvement that England has in the Banshee legend. <laughs> yeah. The fact that yeah. we called it Banshee. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've, the English, no. the Anglos, we've, we've got nothing no. involved in we, this. We, we haven't, haven't even no. got our own legend or anything. It is purely nothing even like, close. Nothing just even Gaelic. Close. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're, we're yeah. looking at Ireland, Wales, Scotland, possibly Cornwall, but I don't know Possible. about you, but I didn't find anything yeah. in Cornwall. No, I couldn't um, see anything. The only the only other mention I found, which I didn't really dive into, uh, was the Isle of Man as well. Mm-hmm. They've 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 got their their own one, um, but but no, nothing specifically in uh, in, in Cornwall. Um, now, again, for those that that don't know, the literal translation of of Banshee is um, "woman of the fairies" or, or "woman yeah. fairy," um, which again lends itself or ties itself into the the kind of the reported height of the uh of the Absolutely. factor that's seen well i mentioned uh, a couple of episodes back about the uh dina she you did which yes. were the which were the the irish fairy folk that's uh, right or fey folk and that's where that that part of it comes from so it's actually yep. spelled s-i-d-h-e that's right yep. um but it's pronounced she yeah, it's the same with the earlier iteration of uh, ben she the she is actually spelled s-i-d-e mm-hmm. so like side but it's actually pronounced she because I kept yeah. saying it Ben's side, and I was like, that doesn't have the same ring to it. It doesn't quite. No. So I literally had to do a Google <laughs> translator and actually hear someone say it. And I was like, oh, okay. So yeah. they all say so, Banshee, but they're just spelt that they're spelt differently to how they sound. So phonetically, and, it doesn't look right. But and that right there is a precursor to how we're going to butcher the Gaelic language. Oh, we're going to absolutely this episode, slaughter it because that's what us it. English do. I suppose we there's butcher a, languages. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, including our own, including yes. our own. But uh, I suppose it's worth as a little disclaimer to anyone who may be from Ireland, Scotland, or Wales who happens to listen to this. We apologise in advance for the, uh, for the absolute slaughtering of uh, of your language. We, we're trying yes, our best, which is all that I guess anyone can ask for. Absolutely, <laughs> and it's meant with the best intentions. <laughs> but, yeah, no, no one's perfect, and we're certainly not. Absolutely, and we're going to do our best as well to refrain. From various different accents as well. We're gonna we're gonna do our best. Oh, I'm gonna like refrain said. as much as I can, unless it's the pronunciation of relevant words. I'm I'm gonna try yes. to not slip into offensive accents. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try not do what I did with Kenny Copeland. And no, he, well, he thankfully come, Ken Copeland. Out. Yeah, thankfully he doesn't come out in this one. So uh... thank God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, back onto the banshees. Yes. Um, <laughs> she may appear as a sweet singing virgin that died young, um, or has been charged with mourning for her mortal family. So yeah. uh, an ancestor, um, yeah, an ancestor to that particular family. Mm. Um, or she can be uh, a shrouded woman crouched beneath the tree, lamenting with a veiled face. Yeah. Um, or flying past the moonlight, like crying bitterly. But there's always a yeah. moaning, a crying, a wailing that's involved in this. Yeah. And it's said that the cry is so sad and mournful that nothing on earth sounds like it. So it's not like you're going to mistake no. the sound of a fox or um, mm. or a barn owl. For well, that it, I mean, because that's I'll, a barn owl seems to keep coming it's, up. It's funny how you mentioned that because it, it that was going to be part of my. 
uh, kind of weak uh, debunking, obviously later in the episode. But funny oh, enough, the bar, it, the barn owl does come up as a potential uh, explanation for why yeah. people hear uh, the shriek to, to the point where someone actually tested it. But that's kind of like a false test. You're kind of you're conducting a test to get the outcome that you want to use it as yeah. proof for something else. So it's like, well, you've not really all you've proven is that you can attract an owl to scream. You've not you've not proven that that's what people heard. So, but I'll, I'll go into that more well, later. Well, on. It's kind of like the flat earthers, isn't it? And they're always doing <laughs> yeah. conducting these experiments that yeah. prove their their theory correct, but in actual reality. It, Really doesn't, doesn't. It, yeah it, it proves their theory at that point but the in the grand scheme of things it actually helps disprove it but yeah. let's not pull out the pin on that grenade no let's not yet. yet let's not do that one yet. No. um so <laughs> most but not all surnames associated with the banshee have the yes. o mac or muk prefix yeah um, i found that which was interesting yeah they, these it's are, actually certain families um these are very old family names as well like they That's surnames right. yeah. with uh now this is this is something i didn't realize as well until i actually started looking into this yeah uh, a guadelic origin so this goes before gaelic was considered a um a language so right. guadelic seems to be uh, it predates irish and scottish Gaelic and was introduced okay. into yeah. ireland around 3000 bce so around about 3000 years ago um, right okay and in some parts, the banshee is re- referred to as a bien hianta or a keen in woman in English. Keen in woman, yeah, that's the. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's the it's the the keen in uh, as we'll as we'll find mm-hmm. out across all three. The 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 keen in woman sort of aspect seems to be the the, the kind of the heavier origin um, out of out of the three. The you know the others seem to take. Um, reference and uh, almost inspiration you know sort of from that and it has quite mm. a um like i was saying before we recorded it it, it carries quite a a caring um you know almost loving origin which i'll be honest i wasn't got a fondness expecting. for it it's a fond- oh yeah like the, the yeah. certainly from like the the video that that you found that, that we've both now watched it's um that there are you know the, the the irish people certainly in this video was were at peace uh were at peace with it you know they had their own encounters and their own sort of um experiences um but they were just it was like it was part of the norm mm. you know it was just like yeah no that's yeah, that's fine that's, that's it's kind just of what you know, it is. it's normal it's, it's, what it is. it's what she does it's what it's there for you know it, it gave us a warning you know it took us by surprise but you know that's the you know it is what it is type thing and it was it was very it was it was i don't know what you felt but for me it was quite unnerving to kind of watch and hear how calm and collected they all were about it especially when some of them recounted mm. their experiences from from being at such a young age and he sort of thought how can you process that at such a young well, age I suppose, be- I suppose it, it, it kind of comes from it's just been such a strong part of their culture and we've yeah um and i know we was talking about this before we started recording that yeah. obviously we found more stories and accounts from the irish side of things yes that- it seems like it's certainly something that began in Ireland and oh, yeah. since I would... moved out to Wales and, and Scotland. And Scotland and whatever, yeah. I'd agree, yeah. I'd, I'd be so quite seen... confident to sort of throw my hat on, on on that peg, if you like, in terms of it being like, you know, the Irish. Well, don't, very... don't, get on, don't get on the fence yet, though. Don't get off the no, fence no, yet. No, not, not yet. That but, till later. No, in, terms of the, <laughs> in terms of the origin, it, you know, I, yeah. I would quite confidently say that it's definitely the original iteration of it was from mm. Ireland and then like many things it's kind of gone around you know sort of the other regions other parts of the globe and has taken on then life's you know life's of its own yeah um, absolutely but um but yeah but that, that, that so that's uh, an introduction to the certainly the the Irish uh banshee um I know we've both got a couple of um sort of stories because that's what I found quite interesting I know you, you sort of mentioned this as well that like oh sorry unlike other episodes we don't have mm. a main encounter no we, we don't have you know one person that we're following throughout this you know with, with their experience or whatever it's it's definitely more of the most kind of legend slash folklore um cryptid that we've that we've discussed because it is just that it is just stories things that people have heard you know legends that have been passed down through generations and 
you know, we don't have a name or a family or a, a year or something to say, right, this is this was the encounter, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. It's just kind of, yeah, just just like a story, something that you'd yeah. imagine, you know, you, you, you sort of your you nan telling you or something or, you know, sitting around That's a campfire right. and swapping stories, you know, that that kind of thing. Um, have you, did you want to go with yours first or yeah absolutely i mean i found, managed to find um two stories in particular that mm. came out of um a book that was compiled by S sergeant john d seymour in 1947 oh, yeah. it is true irish ghost stories and this particular one it um it's a, a member of the family in cork um told to told of how her esteemed family had been plagued by a banshee mm. and she says um, my mother, when a young girl, was standing looking out of the window in their house in the Black Rock near Cork. She suddenly saw a white figure standing on a bridge, which was easily visible from the house. The figure waved her arms toward the house, and my mother heard the bitter wailing of the banshee. It lasted some seconds, and then a figure disappeared. Next morning, my grandfather was walking, as usual, into the city of Cork. He accidentally fell hit his head against the curbstone and never recovered consciousness. In March 1900, my mother was very ill and one evening the nurse and I were with her arranging her bed. We suddenly heard the most extraordinary wailing, which seemed to come in waves around and under the bed. So actually inside the room, it seems. It's not outside. Oh, right. It sounds like it's actually coming from the bed, from right. around the bed. Oh, wow, okay. um, we naturally looked everywhere to try and find the cause, but in vain. The nurse and I looked at one another, but made no remark, as my mother did not hear it. So her mother was in the bed, and her mother didn't hear right. the wailing, but the nurse and this, uh, this woman from Cork, or from the area of Cork, did hear it. My sister was downstairs sitting with my father. She heard it and thought some terrible thing had happened to her little boy, mm. who was uh, in bed upstairs. So, kid, yeah, screaming, you'd think. So she rushed up and found him asleep quietly. My father did not hear it. In the house next door, they heard it and ran downstairs thinking something had happened to the servant. Mm. But the latter at once said to them, did you hear the banshee? Mrs. P must be dying. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, so this, again, that seems to be very much of a muchness with regards to what we hear about these stories as the banshee appears, she it's, wails. It seems like... The, someone a death oh, dies, then yeah. happens afterwards shortly afterwards um, another yeah. account comes from 1894 and concerns the odd experience of a boy at boarding school so a few years ago a curious incident occurred in a public school in connection with the belief in the banshee mm. one of the boys happened to become ill was at once placed in a room by himself where he used to sit all day on one occasion as he was being visited by the doctor, he suddenly started up from his seat and affirmed that he'd heard somebody crying. The mm. doctor, of course, who could hear or see nothing, came to the conclusion that the illness had slightly affected his brain. Yeah. However, the boy who appeared uh, quite sensible still persisted that he heard someone crying and furthermore said, it is the banshee. I have heard it before. The following morning, the headmaster received a telegram that the boy's brother had been accidentally shot dead. Bloody hell. It's not even him who was ill, but another yeah. family member. But he heard it. Yeah. He heard it elsewhere. Yeah. Um, so that I, I picked out those two because they're nice, yeah. short, simple, to the point. Yeah. Um, but it's... I, like uh, those. I don't know about you, but I like what we said before. I just couldn't find any traceable details. Couldn't find any kind of even in like a scripture or a diary entry or something that someone has found through time where someone's written a blow for blow account of, of, of kind of their own personal experience. The stories always seem to be told by someone else. Oh, I yeah. heard that this happened or this is what my, I grew up knowing or, you know, whatever. And like you say, it's much of a, a muchness and the, the, the encounter or the, sorry, the story that, that I found very much kind of fits mm. that. Um, fits that mold and this this also involves uh, a young lad um but he only said that he was returning home uh it was sort of dusk leading into night and as he was a he was, he was walking down a you know cobbled road to, towards his house where he, he lived with his grandmother and on the way he saw a uh, a lady uh, hunched over crying 
covering her face in the sort of the middle of the street, uh, you know, sobbing, weeping, uh, you know, obviously eventually wailing. Uh, he tried to console, he tried to help her, but he wasn't getting anything back. So he sort of left her to it. He ran the way, the rest of the way home because um, he was sort of spooked by it. Um, burst into the into the door of the house. His grandmother was sort of shocked by his entrance and uh, sort of you know uh, you know asked him what was wrong. What, what you know why had he entered? You know he ran into the house in such a way. He explains what had happened to you know sort of his grandmother. Instantly her heart sinks, her eyes widen. She knows that he's come across the banshee. So in a in a panicked kind of fashion, um, she leads him leads him up to Ben. And says, you know, don't, don't worry what about what you saw. I'll, I'll go and make sure, you know, the old lady was okay. Um, sends him off uh, to bed. Obviously, the grandmother, knowing exactly what it was, she doesn't leave the house to to help the uh, old lady. But she does look out of a window upon the street where, where he said he saw her. Doesn't you know? Doesn't see or or hear uh, anything. Um, she yeah just basically uh, ignored it. Um, three days later, the grandmother's brother died. So it was interesting that this, it was the little boy that witnessed the, the banshee, but it was the grandmother's yeah. relative who 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 passed. Um, and I found it interesting that they always say that, it, that the wailing and the, the the weeping is is not supposed to be heard by human ears, and if you do manage to hear it. Then yeah. it's you that will be directly affected. So it'll either be you who's passing, or someone directly connected to you. Um, you know that will. Pass. Yeah, that that's also something that I heard, like that I read from the various descriptions of it. Yeah. as well. But so, so the you and I could be standing next to each other, um, and I yeah. could hear it, but you wouldn't. For example, that's that's how it's supposed to. Absolutely. Uh, well, that's exactly before. like the 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 story from like the nineteen hundreds. Yeah where she said like i heard it the nurse heard it mum didn't hear it dad yeah. didn't hear it but my sister did yeah and then some of the neighbors heard it yeah so yes yeah, is it is it like um is it like an infrasound yeah exactly yeah is it like an infrasound yeah. because um again I was, I was looking into that side of things and there are certain frequencies that i could hear but sam my fiance she she couldn't hear it and yeah. vice versa there was like um eli it actually affected him. He actually hurt his ears, but it was bearable for me. Right. You know, okay. it was, and it was exactly the same yeah. hurts. I can't remember what hurts it was, but yeah. it was like um it, it definitely was, could be yeah, it's something thing, something in the, the 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 sort of the waves or something in how it's kind of projected and it's only going to be susceptible to certain with you know, I don't know, sensitive ears or you know, someone more in tune with that kind of pitch mm. or you know, that kind of level. But yeah, I just found it interesting that it's not because you'd imagine with with how it's described and with how loud it's supposed to be, you would almost expect it to be loud enough that anyone within a you know certain vicinity would hear it. But apparently, yeah. no. I mean, you could be standing right next to her and you wouldn't necessarily hear it because that, it means at that point you're not supposed to hear it, or you know, it's not your time to to kind of hear her or something. Yeah. So, so yeah, I found that quite... a, there's more of a, a, a preternatural sort of aspect to this kind of predetermined in, kind of mess that sort of yeah well she's thing. supposed to be a messenger isn't she so she's mm. so she's there to also deliver a message for someone in particular yeah, so can this is she... the common this is the common misconception of it is that mm. she's not the one causing the death no she's she's, delivering she's the one that's just going okay i am i'm letting you know something's yeah. about to happen but also, for the way that the, the not Irish me. seem to yeah. see it, yeah, so, yeah old me, don't, shoot, me. The Quite <laughs> don't <laughs> shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. But she's from the way that the 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 Irish on that video seem to um, remember the banshee is that she's there to yeah. help the spirit move on and yeah. be with their ancestors, with the rest of their family in the spirit world. Exactly. Yeah. It ties it ties into something else in in mythology going down by that. But again, I'll I'll save that for later. Okay. Yeah. Keep jumping cool. ahead of ourselves, but. But yeah, but just going into that whole um, kind of guardian thing, um, I found a potential origin um, for the Irish uh, one just sort of before okay. we move on. Um, yeah, go and for it. it. And it's, it's believed to have been started by um, a, a lady named Abel or Iable, um, spelled A I B E W L. Um, and she was a guardian to an early Celtic family um, who were rather prestigious. Um, and 
it, it's it's believed more early on that if you, if you were like a peasant family or if you weren't from you know sort of aristocratic or of wealth or something then you wouldn't be visited by um the banshee so mm. all these kind of rich and i think that's where the the mac the muck and the the sort of the o bit kind of comes from because they they were associated with the more prestigious uh families that's right yeah uh, and this one the Gwendolyn the Gwendolyn 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 names so yes exactly it's... yeah that's right and uh so she was um her purpose was to protect the o'brien family um, and she would always ensure that they would um, prosper and would do well, be in good health and everything else. Uh, okay. She, she was also referred to as the goddess of love, so that kind of gives you an idea of the kind of the intention, not quite the yeah. horror aspect that we you sort of, you know, you, you later hear in the Scottish or Welsh iterations, but, but yeah. certainly the origin in the Irish one is that, yeah, she's come from a place of love and kindness, which, again, mm. really took me by surprise, I must admit. Um, she she would play a harp of gold and um, would play music that was too beautiful for mortal ears. Um, if you heard it, you would soon die afterwards. And so that's kind no, of... Well, that that's, so that's, that's kind of... Like, it links into the, the screaming and the wailing. You'd only hear that yeah. if it was directly associated to you. But it, it's funny how it's kind of stemmed from playing, you know, beautiful classical music almost on a harp. So mm. it would be more you know, it'd be more calming. You would hope it or you'd you'd imagine it'd be more calming and more kind of easing into the idea that, oh, okay, my time's up. You know, I can hear the, the harp of the goddess playing or whatever. Whereas if you're yeah. laying in bed at two in the morning and you hear a frigging screech, you know, screeching or a shriek outside your house, you'll be like, fuck, you know, what is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it would, it would yeah. carry a completely different tone. So you can see where some of the other kind of more... Um, sinister uh version darker sort of legends yeah exactly you can see from. where those have, have, have sort of come from um yeah. so yeah so she'd play this harp um it, it wasn't meant for mortal ears you'd imagine it was only meant for herself but if you heard it you mm. knew your time your time was you know up. what there is there's plenty of stories about people hearing um classical like music whilst yeah. wandering in the forests yeah there, there is a lot of it. It's a weird, it uh, going along with like the, the Oz effect as well, what we've, what we've previously yeah, spoken exactly, about. Yeah. But this is almost like the, the complete opposite to that, yeah, where exactly. people are able to hear classical music. And it is, it is a documented phenomenon. It is. That, yeah. Um, it's, it, there, there clearly is a basis in that. Yeah. Um, there's not really so much... Earth. Yeah, there's not really so much of the, the, the um, what you was just talking about, where you hear the music and something terrible happens or you yeah. hear the music and then you die. But no, but you would hear it. Yeah, it's like the, yeah. I suppose I guess the the new age lot would probably say it's the sound of nature, it's the music of nature. Yeah. Um, but I mean it's, it's you can tell the difference Gaia, between as they say. Yeah, but you'd know the difference between kind of birds and crickets or a bloody harp being played in the middle of a wood. French horn going off. French horn going yeah. off. Yeah, you'd be like <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You'd be like, yeah, okay, that's that's a big cricket. Yeah, imagine you'd know the difference. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you know, I really liked that the kind of the innocence um of that and and yeah, and I, I sort of feel that that's kind of the genuine origin, which I then I think kind of leads into the the Keenan woman, which I know you're again going to mm. cover a little bit more in, in detail um, sort of later on. But the last bit about this, um, this, uh, this goddess of, of love, she would, she would be the kind of the head of other banshees. Apparently she had 25 banshees that would operate under, under her ruling. Um, mm. And so she, and so eyeball was referred to as the queen of the she, um, and she would, she would hold court in, uh, an abbey in County Clare in in Ireland, and mm. this this did make me this did make me laugh, and I don't know I don't know where this sort of came from, um, but she would basically judge whether the husbands of Ireland were satisfying their wives. Now, oh. yeah, exactly, yeah, oh. now, it's. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it's not been documented how they would determine that. 
or how they take a census or something like that exactly or how they were knocking on doors exactly yeah exactly is your husband can i talk about your husband is he satisfying you (laughs) have have you got a moment to be talking about your husband and if he's satisfying you (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly exactly i'm talking about jesus not quite yet (laughs) yeah exactly you haven't got down that route yet yeah um and so yeah so it's not documented how how they they would determine that or prove it um but they would basically say to these these men that basically you need to either fulfill your duties as a husband or you will be forever haunted by by us by by fairies is what they specifically say um now what whether that ties into the kind of the dean of she which were more the kind of of sounds more like aspect it sounds more like harpies that does like what what the harpies (laughs) would do yeah pretty much yeah yeah yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's an odd one. I thought that was an odd, yeah. We, we sort of go for all that kind of nice, innocent, sort of caring, sort of, you know, uh, aspect and origins. And then it was kind of, you know, sisters doing it for themselves and, you know, kind of going out there and, you know, starting their movement against the <laughs> that's men. That's it. Oh, fucking hell. Third wave feminism started a long time ago. Very feminism. You heard <laughs> it, it started first. before the first wave. Jesus. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. This is what we uh, know and love now. Yeah. So I think we've got them to thank. But uh, no, I just thought that was quite an interesting um, yeah, potential yeah, that, origins for the um, for the for the Irish uh, for the Irish one. Um, it, it, I think we, you've basically got this story, and then you've got the the kind of the Keenan woman, um, mm. which uh, which is another one. I think it's kind of a toss up between the two, or maybe amalgamation of the two. Yeah, I, uh, I think I know. I think I know where I'm getting off the fence on that. But yeah, again, we'll yeah. save that for the we'll appropriate for segment. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, so that um, yeah, so that uh, is the the Irish. Um, and the o- the OG uh, banshee, if uh, if the you will, the OG banshee, and uh, and that uh, leads us into the next one, which we're going to cover, which is the Scottish uh, version. Yes. Now, again, um, much like the Irish, that they've got a, a couple of versions of the mm. banshee. I think I've counted at least three. I think. Yeah, um, yeah. There's, each there's with a, a different, each with a different purpose. Um, or, or different intention. Um, anyway, um, the one that I, I, I know you've got one that you, you're going to sort of cover, but the one that we I know mm. we both found is the the Kawanag. Uh, I'm not going to. That's how, that, that's how it's pronounced. I'm not even going to try and spell it because it's it's one of those words that's just got far too many vowels to <laughs> kind of make sense. <laughs> it's all a bit Gaelic for me. It's all a bit too <laughs> Gaelic for me, unfortunately. So I don't want to butcher it. So I, I believe it's pronounced Kawanag. Um, is that the again, one from Karamati? That I'll have to pass on. I don't know. I didn't see that reference pop up. All, all I know is that she's another female spirit known as the Highland Banshee. Um, and her name literally means weeper. So Kawanag is a literal oh, translation okay. of the word weeper, which again, the shrieking, the wailing, again, tie, ties into ties into that. Um she foretells the death of someone in her clan by lamenting or, or weeping um, in the middle of the night. Uh, and she'll be found at either like a waterfall, a stream or a lock. Um, and yeah, she it, it's believed or it's, uh, it's certainly suggested that you don't approach or question her like a couple of the other Scottish, yeah. but banshees that you can approach you can almost talk to and interact with it's um it's strongly advised that uh that yeah that you don't um approach or, or question the the Kawanag. um she will um like i say she'll foretell uh the death of those already in battle um and that her weeping and mourning will cause much anxiety to the families of those with sons in war so Gotcha. Again, it wouldn't be yourself directly affected by the wailing, but if you started, to, if you heard it, and then you got that kind of anxious feeling, then it was almost certain that someone that you knew would, would take perish. Your son uh, or your husband, or yeah, basically, yeah, because um, he's in battle. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't. Um, I found one. Uh, a sort of story which we'll come on to after we've gone through the various origins but the, the the kind of the general vibe was that basically people would would uproot from certain villages in 
in Scotland, mm. uh, around the Highlands, some, and, and uproot and move somewhere else because they thought if they weren't close enough to hear it, then their loved one wouldn't perish in battle and that they would survive. So you would find whole families of, of sort of clans moving around the Highlands to sort of try and avoid the, the banshee. Try to but, avoid the spirits. Yeah, but as we've as we've found out, and for those that don't know, is that they actually follow you around. And as we've mentioned, they attach themselves to families. So if you're unfortunate mm. enough to have a banshee attach itself to you, then it will follow you. Uh, I mean, if there are you're stories, Scottish, of course. Yeah, you know. exactly. Yeah, if you've if you're, on, it could, I mean, that not only just with, around the Highlands, but that, you know, some clans actually uprooted and moved to the states um, in the hope of, uh, yeah. of of banishing it. But uh, but no, it followed them over overseas uh, sort well, of as well. So. Once it's we attached, had, it's attached. That seems to be what we also came up with with our Mothman episode, because I did briefly mention Banshees yeah. in that episode as well because of mm. Irish immigration yeah. into West Virginia. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Which is... Uh, we, so we long, won't be going back that? to... How long was that in the episode? Have we mentioned West Virginia? We're 35 minutes in. 35 minutes in. We're we'll back we've in West only Virginia. just <laughs> mentioned West Virginia. <laughs> that's got to be a record. It's, that's got to be the longest we've gone. It really is, without, isn't it? It's got uh, without mentioning good old West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, and as and, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we we won't be going back. Well, we're not going back there. No, we are no, very we're, much we're sticking the, this side of Isles. this side yeah. of the pond. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, now, so, yeah, that, that idea that it follows you is is something yeah. that we've already explored and kind of touched on briefly. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Um, now, so, so you've got the the cow and egg, which is uh, yeah, which is that kind of version. Then you've got another one, uh, which is the bean nigh. Um, yeah, Ben Ben Nye possibly. Yeah, which um, is the washing woman or washer at the Ford. Absolutely, yeah. Um, she's regarded as more of an omen of death and uh, a messenger from the other world. Um, she's more of a uh, type of banshee from those that we've already gone over. In that she will um, she will haunt desolate streams and uh, much like the cow and egg, she'll be around bodies of water um but she will be washing the clothing of those who are about to die mm. um and it's, it's say, she's also known as the... her, her appearance as well is very very different her appearance is very, very much yeah. of like a hag um yes. and i got here um it sometimes describes as having various physical defects including having one nostril a mm. large protruding front tooth and yeah. red or red webbed feet yeah I've, yeah i saw i read that mm -hmm. as well yeah um and, and as you rightly say she's known as either the washerwoman or the laundress um there was a um another scottish uh translation um uh or a, a french one but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna butcher butcher those um but yeah so washerwoman or, or laundress um unlike the cow and egg she can be approached um and it uh, it's believed that you can have uh, wishes granted or knowledge imparted upon you um should you choose to uh should you choose to approach now there is a, a very specific way in which you have to approach which i know you've got some notes on yes so you wanna... yeah so this um this part of uh, the legend and the story actually originates from the isles of mall and Tiri. um I might be pronouncing those wrong but um it was said that she was um, along with her unusual appearance or unusual, you know, like one nostril protruding tooth and red webbed feet, um, she was to have unusually long breasts that interfere with her washing. Yeah. So in order to get over that, she'd throw them over her shoulders. So her breasts, her unusually long breasts, would be hanging down her back. Um, those who who see her must not turn away, but quietly approach her from behind so that she's unaware she should then <laughs> the person he this is very specific as well he, yeah, he yeah. Um, should then take hold of one of her breasts put it in his mouth and claim to be her foster child yeah what uh, yeah <laughs> so, yeah say, say that again no no, 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 no. maybe <laughs> also start maybe again that's... start again yeah. yeah start that again yeah um, <laughs> yeah maybe this is where the old saying cold as a witch's tit comes from <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> you know, quite cool, possibly, that is yeah. cold. Yeah, so I put exactly. an ice lolly in my mouth. You yeah, know, just like... it could be. But yeah, so you're supposed to claim yourself as a foster child, and then she will impart yeah. to him whatever knowledge he desires. 
if she says that the clothing that she is washing belongs to an enemy, then he can allow her to continue washing. Um, but if it belongs to himself or any of his friends or family, then he can stop her by completing her task and avoiding his fate. Yeah. Um, the task being the washing, presumably. The task being not, the washing. Not the titty sucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're no longer a, a foster child anymore, sunshine. Yeah, you can so, crack yeah. on with the washing up. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. But that's, uh, that's something yeah. that I also found as well, that I, in, in me searching for it, was that the a, a, a young lady who would die during childbirth would yeah. become one of these washer women? A Ben Nye, or yeah. A Ben Nye, yeah. Um, but you could avoid that. Mm. Like she'd she'd continue washing clothes and such and taking yeah. on this until her uh, natural mortal death would actually come to an like a natural it mortal pass, life would yeah. come to an end. Yeah. Or the way you can prevent her from becoming a Ben Nye is once she passes, then the family gathers around and collects all the washing that she hadn't previously done yeah. and wash it, and then she doesn't become a Ben Nye. Yeah. Which is a... Like, listen, love, I know you just died during giving birth, but yeah. you ain't done the washing up yet. Yeah, walk it off, babe. You've got some dishes walk to it do, off. yeah? You got, Crack yeah. on, will ya? <laughs> yeah. I need my shirts ironing for tomorrow, babe. You've got, you've got to finish them before you go anywhere. <laughs> you've, got, you've got to do your washing before you could die. So the poor woman just... just died in childbirth and she's now got to finish her chores before she's allowed to pass over. So Yeah, no wonder the goddess of love uh, had those uh, sort of... Held those uh, courts, yeah, yeah. Punishing, punishing the husbands. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Clearly she didn't get over to Scotland. No, no, lucky for them at all. <laughs> yeah, lucky for them. Um, yeah. But again, also like uh, like with the Irish one as well, th th it can change in appearance. So on the Isle of Skye, the washwoman is said to have a squat figure resembling a small, pitiful child. If a person yeah. catches her, she will reveal to him his ultimate fate. Um, she answers all of his questions, but he must also be truthful in answering hers in return. Yeah. If, however, the washerwoman sees him first, then he loses all control of his limbs. Yeah. I don't, and I don't know what then happens after that. Or is that the end of it? She sees him, right? You can't, you can't yeah, walk, you've had you it. can't move. Yeah. And does she then walk away or does has she then got him? Well, I think I read one story where that, that happened to a, a guy and he said he, he, he sort of... He, in the, the story goes he'd remembered walking he felt the presence of someone else but couldn't see anyone and he basically started levitating off the floor lost all controlling of, of his arms and, and legs he couldn't walk he was he was sort of floating mm. and then he saw the the woman appearing um i think he said it was off to off to the left or the right wherever he was and the woman was there hunched over in the water he couldn't approach her he couldn't talk to her but he's almost like he just had to sort of float there and watch her doing what she had to do. And then almost as though when she was done doing that, doing, you know, washing the garments, she yeah. then dropped him and, uh, and disappeared. But he, he had no personal interaction. So it was almost like she didn't want to be disturbed at that point. And so that mm -hmm. was a way of keeping him at bay because she, oh, she had to I see. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that was only one story that I found that in, but that's a potential. Well, that this is something that I've found, especially with the Scottish stuff, it it it, it screams more along the sort of lines of fey folk. Yeah, like um, there's a, there's another a very very short story um, from Perthshire. Um, okay. She was described as small and rotund and dressed in green and can be caught by getting between her and the stream. So oh, okay, yeah, it's like the the water is is her domain. It's yeah. where you're, she you're goes. You're breaking the chain, so sort of thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, the washer woman is uh, sometimes, or woman, the washer at the Ford, said to sing a mournful um, song as she washes the clothes of someone who is about to meet sudden death by violence. Yeah, um, right. She is often so absorbed in her washing and singing that she sometimes can be captured. And if a person can seize hold of her um, after a stealthy approach, then she will reveal. She will reveal who is about to die and will also grant three wishes. So again, this just screams of fairy tale folk fairy, folk, yeah. There's all the way through Gaelic sort of because yeah. even like um, even like the leprechauns, if you captured a leprechaun or you captured his uh, one of his gold coins, yeah. 
Mm. He'd do everything he could to get that gold coin back or to get his freedom. Yeah, that's right. Um, so they grant wishes. Yeah, uh, and such. Um, yeah. But there's also um, with regards to all these wishes, and if men yeah. were able to actually do this, were actually able to get hold of yeah. one of these washerwomen and and get their wishes, um, then there was actually a bit of a saying that I found. Um, and if a man okay. had lived a long and successful life, um, people may say um, the man got the better of the washerwoman and she gave him his three choose desires. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. someone's quite, yeah, if someone's quite wealthy or quite fortuitous or, yeah, generally doing well in life, then someone yeah. will say, oh, he's doing all right, isn't he? He's, he's got the best of the washerwoman. Yeah, he got, be- he got yeah. the better yeah. of her. Yeah, that's all. Sort of, yeah, I read that as well. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I mean, yeah, similar. Yeah, similar sort of uh, short, fairly short story um, mm. that, that I've got as well. Uh, again, location is undetermined. Uh, again, it just seems like a generic story. Um, but a young maiden was walking by a lock, uh, caught sight of, and this is this is interesting. Sorry, because this is a, a maiden, a, another female, not a not a guy. Yeah. Um, and she was passing by a lock and happened to see uh, a Ben Nye uh, crouching uh, beside the lock, um, washing uh, bloody clothes, um, like uh, tunics. I can't remember the Scottish schmuck. word for it, but it was basically schmuck. That was it. Well done. Yeah. Schmuck. Um, washing bloody um, schmucks. And uh, she noticed that the one in the water was particularly sort of bloody and that she was bludgeoning it and beating it and being quite ferocious with, you know, trying to get the, the sort of the stain out. Mm. Um, and it was only upon further look that she noticed that on the bank of the lock, um, there was a pile, uh, a big pile of bloody clothing, uh, again, That's more right, to yeah. sort of smocks, tunics, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, no, knowing of the legend, she sort of thought, thought nothing of it, didn't approach, um, you know, went about a business. Um, and then a couple of days later, um, the roof of the local abbey caved in, killing a, a higher number of uh, of people. Um, mm. Now, I did I did find this one as well, and yeah. I did find um, the the location. Oh, you it. did? Oh, well done. Yes. So the maiden was from Cromarty. Right. Oh, okay. But, oh, oh, the one you mentioned earlier. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, this she is was, one. Yeah. That's right. And and it was Fern Abbey. That Fern Abbey. Collapsed. Yes. Yeah. Fern Abbey collapsed, and uh, yeah, they carry on. As you well, I was just saying. gonna, yeah, I was gonna say that the, the reason why I picked this one because there's not much to it, you know, admittedly. Um, but the thing that kind of captured my attention was the fact that um, this did actually happen, um, back in 1742, um, and 50 people died as a result of that roof cave in, mm. um, and yeah, and obviously this story, you know, kind of depicts that. So I thought we added a bit of uh, real life sort of evidence to yeah. what have so far been a lot of kind of legends and and sort of stories and not fairy tales, but well, I guess fairy tales, <laughs> but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, so quite far. literally fairy tales. But yeah, um, I just thought yeah, added a bit of or helped to add a bit of credence to this particular um, part of the legend because an actual mm. real life event occurred. As Absolutely. described in this in this story, um, whether or not it was good. whether or not the the story of the washerwoman was, was told after the fact and retrofitted into this exactly, historical yeah. event, it just kind of fit the legend. You or, can't, yeah. yeah, you can't really say. It could just be someone no. saying it after the fact. But exactly right. Yeah. At least we did find something that exactly, actually yeah. happened. Actually happened. Yeah, and pretty much the only thing that I've been able to find that actually had a, a date stamp, uh, you know, a mm. location and uh, in, in, in actual articles that, that kind of, you know, evidence that that did in fact happen. So it tied in with what had been seen um, on the, the banks of the, the lock. So, yeah, I thought mm. that one was, was quite interesting. Uh, but what I liked about the, the whole Ben Nye and the washerwoman or washer at the Ford is that it's got such a strong connection to Scottish Gaelic culture. Yes. Um, and I did find uh, this this particular book. Um, it's called the Carmina uh, Gadelica, Volume Two, and it's written by Alexander Carmichael in 1900. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. And it's kind of yeah. like a compilation of uh, of various different uh, Gaelic poems and stories right, yeah. and, and such from mm. from back then. And this one does actually feature um, a washerwoman. Okay. Um, 
And in the dead of night, uh, in the dead watch of the night, wet footman of great Clan Ranald of the Isles uh, was going home to Dunbid in the upland of Ben Benicor, Ben Ben Becula. Pit Teefin. I'm sure if I did an accent as well, it probably wouldn't make it any easier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I'm refraining. Um, from Ben Becula, which is Ben of the Fords. And uh, when he was westering the lock, whom should he see before him in the vista on the stepping stones but the washerwoman of the Ford, washing and rinsing and moaning and lamenting? Yeah. And again, it says something here in Gaelic, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but it okay. translates as a little shirt, the basis of the fist, a male aran inside the mouth. Mm. So I don't know quite what that is. Is the male aran or the male aran? referring to the previous story about a tip being over a back yeah, maybe he's possibly, got to yeah. i don't know i don't know what that I, is. I, I couldn't yeah to be honest, i couldn't find any or draw any i couldn't find anything, anything for it I'm, it didn't make any sense that translation if i'm honest mm. i tried if there to is anyone say, but if, if there is anyone that's scottish that, that, that knows what that means knows yeah. what that is then please, please let, let us know, know. yeah <laughs> please yeah. um so the wet footman went gently and quietly behind the washerwoman and seized her in his hand let me go said the washerwoman and give me the freedom of my feet and let the breeze of reek coming from thy grizzled tawny beard is a near putting a stop to my breath in my throat much more would i would my nose prefer and much rather would my heart desire the air and fragrant incense of the mist of the mountains Mm. So Geezer's got some fucking yeah. honking breath going. I was to say, that's just a long-ass winded way of saying your breath stinks, mate. He, you, uh, even the hag away. don't like it, mate. You know, yeah, he's, exactly. You've got an old got hag washing that. clothes and she don't like your breath. you got to sort that out, sunshine. You need to, yeah, <laughs> pop a tic-tac or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, will not let, I will not allow thee away, said the wet footman, till thou promise me thy three choice desires. Let me hear them, ill man, she says. Yeah. Um, that um, that thou wilt tell me for whom thou art washing the shroud and crooning the dirge, that thou wilt give me my choice wife, and that thou wilt keep abundant seaweed in the creek of our townland as long as the earl shall continue his moaning. Um, I'm washing the shroud and crooning the dirge for the great Clan Ranald of the Isles, and he shall never again in his living life of this world go thither nor come hither across the stepping stones of Dunbid. Yeah. So the, the wet footman threw down the shroud of death into the lock um, at the point of his spear and he flew home um, hard to the bedside of Clan Ranald. He told everything as he saw it um, and that he and then and that what had befelled him. The Clan Ranald leaped his hard round leap upon his feet uh, from the heath bed and ordered a cow be felled and a little coracle be made ready. Um, a cow was felled accordingly. A little coracle was constructed <laughs> in which Clan Ranald went from the isle um, over the lock to the mainland, and he never again returned to Dunbid in the upland of Ben Becula. So basically, so he, he, shit, he ties... shit himself, he built a boat, and he made it out of there, basically. Uh, ach, do I'm fucking out of here. You yeah, know, he's yeah. Off- you know, which which goes with what you were saying earlier about them picking up, getting the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. he, he was, thinking, I don't want him to die, or I don't want to pass, you know, myself. I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, and just took mm. yeah, because he sort of thought, if I don't hear the wailing, or you know, if I if I make it away before she finishes washing washing the clothing, then maybe I can somehow beat death and you know yeah. escape the clutches of the. Uh, the washerwoman, yeah. Which sounds, it, obviously, tying it to Scotland as well, it sounds very much like Macbeth, you know, where Macbeth yeah. comes across yeah, yeah. the the three witches, three witches. on the moor, yeah, yeah. on the marshes, yeah, and they, actually, yeah. you know, they tell him yeah. his fate, yeah, and that. it's up to him whether or not he acts upon the information that, that yeah. they've given him. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. No, I like that. It's, uh, you yeah, it's quite a good, uh, quite a good one. Right, so we've done the Irish origins, we've done the uh, Scottish origins. So I suppose we, we should uh, we should take on the Welsh. And, let's, um, yeah, let's do it. We found the uh, the Cacharif, didn't we? We have, yes. Um, again, like the Irish and uh, Scottish, that you know, we found that there are a couple of uh, 
sort of versions, um, you know, even of the, the Welsh uh, Banshee, the Kuha Reith uh, is the one that um, I made some, some notes on. Um, and this one is different uh, and sort of intrigued me in particular because there isn't a description in terms of an appearance. This, uh, the, the Kuha Reith, um, is is a disembodied voice basically so you, you oh, never okay. you never see anything you never there's no visual representation certainly from what i've seen um it is quite literally just a a voice that you hear um mm. now there's not a great deal on it in terms of kind of stories or anyone retelling an account that that may have happened in 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 history so again if anyone's listening and they have one um then yeah. you know please point us in the the sort of direction but it did seem quite quite sparse in that respect but uh but uh, basically people uh, would hear a a dull mournful uh, noise um as though someone was sick so you imagine if someone's ill and kind of groaning and sort of moaning quite you know sort of forlorn and and, and mm-hmm. sad i guess then that that's the kind of noise that they would hear so it wouldn't be like a an audible shrieking or, or wailing it'd be a kind of a whimpering kind of Almost like you know, feeling sorry for yourself type thing. Yeah, like whimpering, <laughs> weeping. Um, it's uh, it's it's believed that you would only hear it specifically um, before a shipwreck. So if a ship was kind of leaving or coming into the sort of the, the ports of, of Wales, that the local sort of town folk would would hear this noise um, mm. as and when the ship either has or is about to. Uh, yeah, wreck, like sink or, or, or sort of crash into rock, okay. um, that kind of thing. Um, is it, it's, sorry, is it because I didn't really look too much at the Kaha Reef, is yeah. it along the same sort of lines as like Banshee that she's just a harbinger of death? She isn't causing the death? Yes, yeah, so there's no, I couldn't see anything that directly linked it to actually being the cause of these kind of ships wrecking. It was mm. more of a warning. Um, okay, so, so it, literally it, it, like a very air much siren. Like, <laughs> it's very yeah, it's very much like separate to sirens and mermaids and, and such, which would yes. cause yeah um, ships to wreck. From, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, so it's different to such. Yeah, which again, you know, sirens and mermaids have, have come up again in more the Welsh one because of that. Because this is just a voice, uh, and it was just a warning to shipwrecks, where obviously you know mermaids and sirens would be more directly involved in the actual vessels crashing or, or sinking mm. so no there's no link this this one again is more just a, a messenger of death as opposed to a bringer of, of death in that respect so gotcha. you would yeah you would hear the the, the the very dull weeping um and again you could either be directly involved so you, you could have a loved one out at sea um or you could just be you know, sort of in the vicinity, it doesn't seem to be. A oh, so there's no sort of like family link or anything like doesn't that. Doesn't seem just... to be. No, it doesn't seem to be. It just seems gotcha. to be that if you're living in and around a port in Wales and you know that there's a big ship either coming in or has just left, if you hear this dull wailing, then that would signify that it either has or is about to crash or wreck or, or sink or, gotcha. or or whatever so um more like, more like the, the the community sort of banshee rather than the uh yeah the, certainly elitist. from what i've seen yeah exactly yeah <laughs> certainly for yeah everyone's included in this one yeah there's no discrimination um it's uh yeah but that's all i could uh see on that there is another um kind of slight twist to that story in the sense that others believe that they hear it when a welsh native living abroad uh, is about to die or, or has just died, um, which again I think just signifies the distance. Obviously, if, if you've got a ship far out at sea, or if you've you know, which is a Welsh vessel, or if you've got a, a Welsh native, you know, mm. someone from the the local town who's also you know far away, whether that be in somewhere else in Britain or even further afield, if they're about to yeah meet their demise then you would also hear this this dull weeping so yeah th- th- this one i found was was sort of different um in the sense that yeah it was just a voice similar again in the fact that it's more of a warning uh, yeah. against something happening but literally just a voice so there's no visual representation um which uh, which i found was quite interesting but uh, but again that's different to the the, the sort of the iteration that you've um 
that you've come across, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, um, it, it came up in the previous episode, the Cracker Ribbon. Yeah, Cracker um, Ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> very phlegmy, that one. <laughs> yeah, that, that one, very, very phlegmy, that one. <laughs> yeah. um, and anyone that has listened to the previous episodes, they know that the, the saying that comes along with it, she's as ugly as the Cracker Ribbon. Yeah. So, so it gives you an idea Gracker, as to what her appearance... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So it's reported, she's um, reported as uh, a get hag of the mist, um, she's a monstrous Welsh spirit um, in the shape of a hideously ugly woman. Um, frankly, the, uh, the the Welsh saying, as I've just said there, she's also with a harpy-like appearance, unkept with hair and all wizened, withered mm. arms and leathery wings. So this is a... Like I'm the Irish got... one, where you mentioned wings. about the harpies. Yeah, said about absolutely. About the whole um, eyeball, um, goddess of love. And yeah, like uh, sort of setting her benches troop. on people. Yeah, a little troop of harpies. Yeah, yeah. So again, another another connection. Yeah. So this is what's what I found with this one was that she had wings, a lot like leathery wings. Oh, wow. Right. Okay. Um, she had long black teeth and a pale corpse-like features. So she's all sunken. Right. Okay. And hideous. She's yeah. she's um, I guess the the sort of image that comes to mind is um, anyone that's played Skyrim. You come right. come up against the uh, the old hags in Skyrim. It's that sort of yeah. if you if you Google it, have a little yeah. look. Hag, hag, and but Skyrim. it is actually a banshee character, isn't it? In in Skyrim, is there is those hags that that's meant to be the representation? It's a similar sort of similar yeah, yeah. sort of thing to it. I've not um, played it, but I I, I know, yeah, that, I know of the reference. Yeah, they don't fly. They make this wailing sort of noise as they come yeah. towards you. Yeah, um, but yeah, so she's she approaches uh, the window. Of the person that's about to die by night and calls their name. So she's like, she just sticks her face up against the window and whispers a name. Whispers their name. Yeah, that freaked me yeah. out. Like, how horrible would that be? Oh, fuck it. Especially with that sort seeing of Seeing this thing at your well. window. Yeah, exactly. Just seeing her at your window would be bad enough. But then hearing mm. like the, you know, the sinister whispers of, you know, your name or a loved one's name through the, you know, through the glass or whatever, that, that would yeah. be horrific wouldn't it this is where she also connects with the, the Greco ribbon connects with the Kahari. Yeah. Um, she travels invisibly beside people um, and utters a cry when they approach a stream or a crossroads. So, oh, okay. and sometimes depicted as washing her hands in the stream or the crossroads as well. Right. Uh, okay. Most often, the Greco Ribbon will wail and shriek, uh, My husband, my husband, or my child, my little child. That's, so that would signify. Sorry, that that signify who it was that was due to uh, due to sort of perish, wasn't it? Absolutely, say my yeah. husband, my child, but it would be yes. your husband, your father, your child, your son. That Although kind of thing. sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes um, she will assume a male's voice and cry, mm. "My wife, my wife." Yeah. Um, and if the death, if it is the death that is coming, the name of the one that's doomed is supposed to be the one. Who heard her 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 shrill? Mm. Um, although often she's like invisible, along like the the kahari. The kaharith, yeah. She can sometimes be seen at crossroads and stream when the mist arises. So, okay, you know, so like maybe a something... misty sort of spectre. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Maybe. Like, um, yeah. Okay. You know that makes sense. Yeah. That, that does kind of tie in. Yeah. So maybe it is the the kaharibun that they're they're seeing. But Possibly. because that because it's not in the right location, because there's no mist, they're not by a body of water. That maybe they mm. just hear the voice and they don't see the almost demonic figure that that it kind of takes on. Uh, yeah. You know, if you are well, unfortunate enough. <laughs> well, going a little bit further into it as well, there is some speculation that the the Greco Ribbon is um, was once a, a water deity um, or an aspect right. of a yep. Welsh god, Don, yep. um, and, and probably mispronouncing that but it's d o with a an accent over the yeah. top of it n right okay um that so again, it don, don or don, don, dawn or something dawn, yeah. maybe potentially yeah, possibly uh, again i won't butcher that, it yeah anyone who knows, knows anyone it, welsh yeah give us correct us a favor because <laughs> yeah, they don't have bloody online translators or anything like that for the actual no, sound they don't no i tried to, to look for figure it out yourself really help me yeah help me out so hopefully we've not butchered it uh, too much but uh oh, but no, it's interesting have. oh we definitely have but it's uh interesting actually especially when you mention um this reminds me of something that i read 
that I know we had a laugh about beforehand, but the where you mentioned about the the Kaka Ribbon um, taking on a male voice um, yeah. to say, you know, my wife, my daughter, I think that may be the cause of why some people believe um, right. that men can also be banshees and what? that they're referred to as banhees. <laughs> Fuck off. Well, honestly, honestly, I've read it. Now, it only ties ban itself... Banhees. Banhe, not banshe, but banhe. No, I oh. think that that's... Uh, I, th- I thought it was a wind-up when I read it. <laughs> also, you've got she, which means her, and so someone's oh. just changed that to he to um, insinuate oh. that it's a male banshee. No, I, I, I haven't seen any uh, kind of origins. It was kind of tacked on to the origins of the banshee. So, but, but also, that, now you mentioned that with the, the kaka hibben, that, that kind of it made me think of that. And I know, <laughs> I know we had a laugh about it uh, oh, earlier. But, um, but yeah, people believe that, that men can also be can also be well, uh, banshees and these harbingers of, of death. So, but they'll be called telling banshees. of the times we live, that's for sure. You <laughs> yeah, can be anything you want. Yeah. You can be anything yeah. you want, sunshine, even a banshee. As long as, you, as long as if you put your mind to it, you can achieve whatever you want. If you want to be a oh, banshee, frankly, then you be a banshee, mate. Don't you let anyone tell you different. <laughs> oh, next thing you know, they'll be calling them band days. Like, band, know, just... band thems. You know, don't get all... their pronouns wrong. Yeah, we've got to be all inclusive here, mate. We can't go offending, <laughs> <laughs> offending people. The banshees are all inclusive. It, yeah, all inclusive. Well, I could imagine if you know, if you know, the banshee does get a bit upset, would actually you, you know, stop calling me that? I'm not a woman. I'm not a woman. Not I, I'm, a, I'm a they. Thank you very much. I'm the, neither That's a he not or how I identify. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I thought you'd enjoy that. that but yeah, yeah, I did you, like that. You, you saying that did uh, yeah make me remember <laughs> that I'd read yeah that someone someone believes that yeah you can have banned wow. heats. Well, that's that's that is a well, new one. I didn't actually come across that at all. I did you know I, when we did speak about it before? I thought that was quite yeah quite th- humorous. Th- there was nothing to it. It literally just. A kind of a footnote, almost on the uh, on one of the pages that I found that was obviously going into the origins of the the banshee, and it was literally like a paragraph, no more than that, mm-hmm. of just that that people people believed it, and you know, kind of this was kind of this was why sort of thing. Yeah. Um, there was no, like I say, there was no origin of its own. There was no stories of its own. It didn't lend itself to anything particularly compelling. It was literally just, you know, people throughout time believe, yeah. Yeah. And obviously, then you saying that about taking yeah, on the male voice to sort of deliver a slightly different message that could be a potential uh, origin as to well, where, where that theory came from. But there is literally nothing else to support it. But no, thought no, I'd mention really it anyway isn't. for a laugh, if uh, if nothing else. <laughs> yeah, there seems to be there seems to be that definitely in the the Scottish and the Irish and, and sorry the Welsh, the Scottish and the Welsh. Um, accounts of these sort of creatures yeah. that it's definitely a lot more fey folk um, than the definitely, Irish because yeah. we've obviously we've previously spoken about it and we previously yeah. mentioned about the keen in women and yes that's right yeah this could be a, a potentially strong origin for the Irish Ben she yes really um, so the keen in woman for anyone that doesn't know is um, she would roam the, the countryside traveling from village to village and often through fields then but she wouldn't ever take like the, the the trodden path she'd always go through through nature yeah. so it was she almost had like the the sense of suddenly appearing in the village yeah, that's right and her appearance because she's walking through the wilderness all the time her appearance is often tattered and worn and you know yeah, she's a bit, a bit malnourished yeah, yeah. You know, drag, drag through a hedge backward, that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, you know? exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, and the keening um, involves rhythmical mourning, mournful singing and wailing accompanied by weeping over the deceased's body. Yeah. Um, and this would actually, this would be like a, a ritual or a ceremony that would last for days. Yeah. And the purpose of it was to help the family through the, the the grieving process by channeling their grief into her voice into them they'd be their vessel to of, of grief so they could see more absolutely i guess because it was a sign of the times and they wanted to see more kind of composed and, and more sort of with it so they would actually say i mean i read that they, they would actually hire either a singular late like female or a group mm. of women 
to keen at the at the funeral. So yeah, as you say, they would yeah. they would project their sorrow and their mourning into these Kenyan women or Kenyan women. And then they mm. at the funeral procession and and whatever else, as you say, over a span of days, would literally do nothing more than audibly mourn the loss of that loved one, which is yeah. where the whole wailing and shrieking thing came from. Absolutely. Um, and it was it was certainly for those that were particularly good at it as well, they'd actually received payments. That's where the the yeah. idea that that they were hired. The original yeah. the, the Keenan women would they weren't it was just kind of like a call in for them that they yeah. would they would go village to village they would start off on those yeah. trails and just yeah. go and do what they were supposed to do what their calling was yeah was for and, and it was their if they were particularly good for it then they'd receive a bit of payment for it yeah exactly um, yeah. No, that's now right. the keenan was actually discouraged by the catholic church surprise surprise maybe it's yeah. a bit too pagan for them yeah probably um <laughs> but the irish seem to have a bit of a knack for holding on to their traditions their traditions and, and, do, and, and doing very well at it yeah yeah, and it wasn't phased out until the 1960s. No. So quite late, really, mm. that yeah, Keenan quite recent, was still going anything. on. Yeah, yeah. And um, I actually did find, um, I did find a recording, in you fact, did. of yes. a Keenan woman. It was Bridget Mullen, who's a professional Keener, and I shall yeah. play that for you now. Oh, 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 no, so and Oh, 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 no. Oh, 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 no. It's so hard, no. It's so hard, no. It's so hard, And that is uh, from yeah. a song called Keenan for the Dead. Yeah, I think I've read, and I hope I'm right with this, but this was actually someone, I can't remember his name, but he basically wrote like a one... It was like a one scene play um, and penned that oh. song as, you know, as, as part of it, but it was taken from actual, an actual Keenan ritual, but it was for the purpose mm. of, uh, of a, a, a sort of a display, a, the, a theatrical sort of display. But I mean, that, that particular oh, okay. segment, which I know you found on YouTube is actually, um, I think it's just shy of two minutes and it basically follows yeah. that kind of, that kind of vibe throughout the the whole thing, and I mean, it, it kind of. I, I mean, I got chills listening to it the, the, for the sort of the mm. first time because it, it was very. I found it to be very sort of impactful. I mean, I will say I'm not going to attest to understand what what you know what she's saying, but I just think you can tell. The, I, I felt the communication like in her voice and in her tone of of kind of how it was sounding. If you imagine that there's one or a group of women doing that at a funeral. I can really imagine the impact that that would, you know, that that would Absolutely. have on the, well, they, the, the, the on the day. They also um, put it into a lot of popular culture. So the idea of Keenan as well is in a lot of films. So if ever you've watched right. anything along the same sort of lines as like Lord of the Rings, for hmm. instance, when they have like a, a scene where someone's in battle yeah. and they're, you know, they're on the verge of dying. Mm and their loved one thousands of miles away suddenly feels it mm. the soundtrack comes across there's there's often a soundtrack where a woman is singing yeah in a language that we don't understand so yeah. you could attribute it to gaelic yeah exactly for instance yeah. and it always has that soul that sorrowful sorrowful yeah. sort of sound and does, yeah. sadness um, yeah, definitely yeah and i think as you're, that, you're right it does pop up in lord of the rings yeah, a couple of and times, there's other there? films that that do follow that sort of medieval mm. battle sort of genre that will yeah. use that as well. So I'm pretty sure they used a lot of it in, in um, yeah in Braveheart. I think they would have done. Yeah, I think if I remember that that type of soundtrack, as you say, over some of the battle scenes and stuff. Yeah, it must have taken influence. Uh, and it always from has that, yeah. a, an emotive response from you as well. It gives you those chills. It, it gives does. you exactly. Yeah. There is there must be something magical about exactly Keenan right, yeah. and I'm magical not with a C but with a K you <laughs> yeah. know it's you know there, there must be yeah. something to it that actually uh, actually must have given birth to the legend of this banshee so how so. does it actually connect to the banshee well this is what I believe mm. that the belief back then so we're talking like um you know pre-3,000 years ago, so mm. the, the, the Guadalic 
sort of mm. languages and such, when the O's, Max, and Mooks started turning up. Yeah. I think so that was around the 13... Then, I think if I remember right, if I got the, the time periods, so I think that was around the 1380s or something. I think, was it? Something like that? The Goidelics. The, the Goidelic was about 3,000 years ago. 3,000, so right, okay. Yeah, 3,000 years ago. Right, so. Okay. This um, so when people when the Keenan women first started going along. So this is might be where the idea that the um, the spirits, the 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 Gaelic spirits or Goidelic spirits, yeah, um, was started moving around the various different cultures. Sure. So back then the belief was that the better the Keena, the more important the person was who was being mourned. Mm. So if there was like a death in say one of the noble families or the royal families. Like what you said before, they would hire the best keeners around. So it was said that um, they that they were so good, these keening women, that the common folk would believe them to be fairy women and therefore called them bien she, yeah, so, which morphed into banshee over time. So yeah. we've already um, we've already spoken we've already about where bien she yeah. comes from. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. women of well, the fairy women. Yeah, um, and if any if they were quite short, quite diminutive, then, yeah, definitely. They, common folk would have more. gone, she's not human. Yeah. She's one of those fairy folk. You know, yeah. that she's got this beautiful voice. She's able to channel this sadness and yeah. and everything. Yeah, exactly. uh, unfortunately, though, most keeners ended up having quite depressing lives. Um, and like I said before, they would roam the countryside from village to village. They wouldn't ever just stay in one place. Um and we mentioned before that they were paid. If they were good, they were yeah. paid. But they were often paid in alcohol. Right. So then, you know, if they're good at it, they get paid with it. They, you know, we all know what alcohol does to people. People yeah. become dependent upon it. Mm. Um, I mean, we've already, we can see what, what happens to, say, the local drunk woman. Mm. That and there's there's a few down south in High Street. There's one in particular. I don't know her name, <laughs> and but I know her face. Yeah. We all anyone that's in South End will probably know her we'll as know, well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and she's wandering around the streets, you know, and screaming and, and, and shouting and moving about, dancing about, and whatnot. And anyone mm. from yesteryear would have been spooked by that sort of behaviour. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the, the the way I kind of see it is, it's a bit like. Um, a Keenan woman might start her career as a, as a Keenan woman, fresh as like a, a Disney princess, singing, yeah. her, singing her heart away because yeah. she feels every single bit of emotion. Yeah. And then by the, time, yeah. Now, by, by the time she's grown old and everything, she's yeah. seen everything, she's been paid in alcohol, which is just like, she's like, I've seen it all before, you go show, now where's me fucking drink? You know, it's just like <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's where she suddenly yeah. morphed into the old hag, the, the hag scary old hag that would sit thing, underneath yeah. the tree, and yeah. and would you know, and think about it as well that they, they, once they get to that sort of point, they become mm. an outcast. Yeah, you know, they're no longer welcomed into the village. They're, they're an outcast. So, and, yeah, yeah. So she's having yeah. to sit outside of a night because she can't get a room because no one wants her in there because there's a yeah. superstition around her now yeah. and so she's depressed she's outcast so what what do they do they they, they keen regardless so they just keen into the night so they they sing they wail and they yeah. they sing these sad songs and if at the time you're talking like three thousand years ago you come out your your hut and you hear that going on in the dead of night you might think, and they've already got a reputation for being fairy women. Exactly, yeah. And there's already, um, it's it's a sound that's synonymous with heralding a death, or mm. a, a sound that's, you know, synonymous yeah. with death itself. Exactly. Then yeah. they're going to think that something terrible is on the way. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of manifested within itself. As you, you know, as you say, it was just uh, yeah. kind of like paying... Um, respects and, and, and honor to someone who had died, as you say, it was normally someone of wealth or uh, you know, from a pre prestigious background, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, as you say, if, if that was the only kind of payment, if they, were, if they were wanderers, you know, if they were potentially sort of homeless and that was their only real payment, then you know that over time, then yeah, it's gonna you know, mm -hmm. obviously get to them. You know, if, if people you know, associate you... hearing that vocalization to death, the more old and haggard and resentful she gets, the more she sings. The more people are going to have a, a negative outlook Absolutely. and response to that, which is why, yeah. Yeah, as you say, then 
over time the legend takes a more dark and, and kind of sinister um Mm. And it probably could take quite a quite a sad sort of approach. I mean, I did have a thought when I was thinking about it, and I'm going to bring the tone down a little bit. You know, maybe <laughs> she's maybe she's keen in for herself. I, I mean, yeah, she's keen I mean, in the death of possibly. herself. Yeah, and it's just like wailing away her days, sort of thing of not yeah. wanting to be surrounded by death all the time and being seen as this kind of yeah. If people are seeing her as like a, you know this this otherworldly creature, this this harbinger of death, then you know, you are almost going to start while believing the hype. And, but the thing is, while she's young and beautiful, they're like, oh, yeah, let's welcome this fairy woman into our, into yeah. our village. You know, let's, let's bestow gifts upon her. Let's make her life great. Uh, and then, you know, she starts getting paid in alcohol when she starts getting a little bit older. And, the you know, witch the looks and... have started to, to, yeah. to kind of fade yeah, away. And then suddenly she's turned into the withered old hag yeah. that can't sing as well anymore, but will keen yeah. regardless. Yeah, and it takes that more dark, sorrowful, you know, sinister tone because there's more of that emotion from her conveyed into it. She's mm. not just doing it on behalf of the family. She's now conveying her own emotion into it, which would bring with it a, a whole different feeling, wouldn't it? I guess it's a poetic sort of link as to how it's gone from the Irish very much see the, the, the banshee as a mm. as as a part of everyday life and they well, as, welcome as a comfort. if they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll post that video that, that I found that I came across that I sent to you. Yeah, definitely. We'll post yeah, that on the socials that. as well so you guys can have a look and, and, and a listen to it and see how... I mean, that it seems like that video was made in, like, the 90s, I believe. Yeah, it's quite, well, it's quite recent here because they were paying, paying respects to sort of people that had passed in the sort of the late mm. 90s, I think, mid, mid to late 90s. So it could even be, you know, slightly more, you know, recent than that. But, no, it was. I mean, that was a good... You know that was a good uh, a good watch. Um, I suppose another tie, um, which kind of brings us, kind of keeps us still talking around the the Kaka ribbon. Um, mm. And I know we mentioned sort of this before, which I know you're not too kind of hot on, but I did find a few kind of references and stories, um, yeah, linking the the Kaka ribbon specifically um, to the uh, the Valkyrie. Um, yeah. Of, Norse mythology and the the connection there is that the that the Kakaribun is also seen as you know more of a collector of the dead so you know mm. the, the people have already passed um you know or they're about to pass and you know she will hang around you know to collect their their souls and help them pass over you know into um you know into whatever realm or what other world she's, you know, sort of taking them to. Whereas the, the Kuharith was more of a, a warning. Mm. Kakaribun was seen as more of a, a collector. And obviously we know that the, the Valkyrie from Norse, you know, mythology is, um, you know, is, is very much the, the same. She'll, you know, a shield maiden will, will come down and collect yeah. those who are worthy of Valhalla. And so that they're, they're yeah. drawn sort of, comparisons you know there that i mean that, that was pretty much all i found so it's not necessarily saying that one has influenced the other or they well, are it's very similar like, to the uh, one in scotland as well was the uh the, the nag was it the the, the ben uh the the cowanag the cowanag, cowanag yeah so where the the men would die in, in, in battle. battle yeah and she would appear yeah. because she's the one that's in battle yeah. i mean the, the one thing that i would say probably doesn't quite tie up with the Valkyries is the Valkyries were never seen and probably again much no, along the sort of lines as the, um, the the queen of the Banshees that sort of thing where yeah. there's loads of Valkyries with various different names yeah exactly and yeah the, the idea the the legend of the, of the Valkyrie they had names like um, armor battle spilled shaker uh, spear shaker uh, Wand wielder, axe age, um, or sword dim, um, and those were sort of ways in which warriors died. Yeah. So, if say you know you took a, a spear to the chest, then you would be you were killed by spear shaker, and spear shaker took that your your spirit to Valhalla. Yeah. So it was that Valkyrie that that took representative you. of the death. Yeah. Yeah. Or if your yeah. mate uh, took an axe to the head. Yeah, then it would be like axe age would yeah. take your spirit. It would be to yeah. Valhalla. Yeah, you know, exactly. so I mean, which is usually the, like the the way in which the Valkyries were depicted. Um, 
and the the all the imagery that we've got of them actually comes from later artwork so yeah. it would have come from like the renaissance and, and such yeah exactly yeah. um but i mean the, the valkyries are literally a metaphor and That's the right. norse in particular were very very they were very keen poets oh they were you know it was yeah, very much a, a strong part of their culture to yeah. to be poetic in not just um not just uh, like their because they didn't really have written language really they had runes mm. but it wasn't really written yeah. language but they would um and what this is what i like a lot about the latest Assassin's Creed game is they've got an activity on there it's called flighting and it's basically old school rap battle you know it's <laughs> it's so it's basically insulting each other with rhyme you know and if you were particularly good at it then you were you know you were renowned as a poet and right, okay. that was you know you was also a, a drengi which was a, a, a strong warrior right. but he was also a flighter as well right okay so you was good with your weapons you're good with your words yeah. as well okay. so yeah yeah it was and the idea of the silver tongue that comes from um norse culture norse right okay that, make, I mean, that, that does make sense yeah as you say that there isn't um there isn't any real compelling link between between the two um i thought there was enough there to to sort of mention it not as a particular oh, yeah. origin or that one was like the other but there was definite you know, sort of similarities, and it came up in a lot of the uh, references and, and and sort of articles that I did uh, that I did read that there was a you know a possible link. But as you say, with the you know the Valkyries, they're they're never actually seen. You know, whereas with the the Kakariban, they they are supposedly seen. Mm. So that's one you know noticeable, um, quite important um, you know uh, difference. The only other thing I wanted to um, you know wanted to mention as well, just regarding the scream and the, or the wailing of the banshee. That's become its kind of token um, uh, sort of vocalization because it's it's believed that hearing that is to is to help the person that has passed to cross mm-hmm. over. So if you hear the wailing or if you hear the scream, then it's to help the spirit basically follow your voice. So they follow the scream, so they know Marco Polo. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Over here, no, no, this way, Marco, Marco. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, yeah, it's pretty much that. Um, so they they can be helped in in passing yeah. over. Yeah, so that's the significance of the the scream or the the wailing. It's um, that it, makes sense actually, because yeah. they've again they've put that sort of similar sort of concept into um, Insidious, the film we spoke about that right. before. About yeah, we the, have, yeah. You know, that the, is the whole idea of following the voice, and obviously poltergeist. Poltergeist, um, yep. The you know, following my voice, and... going to the going to the light, and all of that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, I like that. I mean, so I again, do it like... draws a reference there with various mm. various other yeah iterations and and pop culture. Um, so yeah, no, I thought that was um, yeah, it was quite. Um, I thought it was quite important to to mention it anyway. But um, mm. I mean, I think we've both pretty much got off the fence kind of already inadvertently yeah. but um, i mean that's that's what of... i'm thinking i mean yeah i'm thinking that there is a real world origin of yeah. the banshee i think there really is um yeah. however the more research we do surrounding these sort of subjects uh, um, and whatnot um even down to like the other podcasts that i listen to faith folk is coming up a lot it's really it weird because it i'm in in no way am i in connection with my research is connecting with what is being posted week on week with these other podcasts. Yeah. But it seems like Faith Folk is coming up a lot. More and more. And yeah. Definitely. I'm fine. Yeah. Like when we when we started looking into this, I was I, I kind of knew a few bits and pieces about the Banshee as it was from mm. lis- listening to all this sort of stuff. And, and stuff, really, yeah. Pop culture and always having yeah. a sort of interest in the weird and wonderful sort yeah, exactly, of stuff yeah. and preternatural beings and whatnot. So I already had a little bit of yeah. knowledge in, in the back of my mind as it was. But um since we started looking at the the Welsh and the Scottish side of things, the Scottish side in particular. Mm. screams of faith folk the whole yes. having to you know if you see one you capture it yeah you, you get your free How wishes you get your, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah yeah the, or not in the, <laughs> i don't i don't think i'll be taking that sort of approach no this is this is a disclaimer to anyone up in scotland you see an old lady washing her clothes by the lock do not don't go and do her. what was described yeah <laughs> they're not yeah, going to do that not. yeah it's not going to be frowned upon you're going to have a really angry old Scottish lady after you now. She's going to be trying to 
crack your head the, with a rock. The village lynching you as well. So yeah, we, <laughs> yeah. we wouldn't recommend it. Wouldn't recommend uh, it. <laughs> but I do think there, I do think there is something to it. I think there yeah, is, definitely. you know, there's. Um, I like the preternatural side of the Irish, yeah, side of it where she is an ancestor and she is there to for help the dead. Yeah, you know, she's helped there to help the dead move on. That's her calling. Yeah, which then goes back to the real world origins of the Kenyan women. Yeah, being exactly, their yeah. calling to do that for the people, yeah. not necessarily just one particular people, but just but for they... the people that, that yeah. were there. Exactly. You know, she'd yeah. wander into a village, and you know, nine to, the death rate was fairly high. Let's be honest, the mortality rate was fairly high. Pretty much. So yeah. the likelihood that she would just suddenly appear once someone had died. Mm wasn't an uncommon thing to no. to happen so, probably coincidence more than you know more more than anything possibly well yeah i mean we, it's, we spoke about that before this is one of those things i don't think coincidence yeah. really exists there's no i think you things it's happen. a purpose for things yeah yeah things happen and, yeah. and then there are synchronicities you yeah, know where exactly, yeah. things do very much happen for a reason mm. um so yeah. I, i'm i'm kind of dancing on the lines of there being a real world physical yeah. uh, origin to the banshee. Mm. But then when I take into account these other, like the Welsh and the Scottish ones, there's definitely a fey folk element yeah. to it. I think so. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think, yeah, I'd, I, that's probably where I would be as well, just to sort of be boring. You know, I'd, I'd probably be dancing on that side of the fence, mm. um, you know, as well. Um, I think that the Keenan women, is the real world origin, um, I, I, whether it be, I, I, I guess the OG would be would be Ireland. I th- you know, I think that that's mm. kind of a, you know a, a, a practice that did occur, you know, hundreds or thousands of years ago. You know, where families would either welcome uh, these Kenyan women, or as you say, the Kenyan women would just turn up, um, knowing that there'd been you know a death or could sense it. Oh, you know, they'd owe their service you know, to these grieving families, they would be the vessel mm. of grief for these families. And, you know, they'd be over dramatic and they would wail and scream and whatever to help vocalize the grief felt by the family. Um, and then I think like anything, you know, this real world kind of practice um, has kind of lent itself to legend as, as maybe news traveled of these women going from village mm. to village you know, it wasn't just, oh, you know, a group of Kenyan women were in the village or a Kenyan woman appeared at, you know, my uncle's funeral. It wouldn't just be that simple. A story would would travel with it, you know, what the woman looked like or, you know, how she sounded, you know, was it yeah. just that she was wailing? Was she singing? Was she keen in? You know, and then I think it just kind of manifested itself into the legends that we've gone over in this, you know, in this, in this episode. Um, and I think just from there, it's kind of sparked all these other, you know, all these other kind of experiences and tales and legends. And and so I think with this one, there is a very, I think this is probably one of the first that we've done that I think ha- actually has a real world, you know, origin um, yeah. and, and has gone the other way and has actually gone into legend and folklore. And it's, it's had, almost like a Chinese whispers, like, you know, it's started off as one thing. And then when you get to the end, it's completely, mm. it's almost entirely sort of different. Um, in, in 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 how it's travelled. Obviously, there's a lot of the same. Yeah, in how it's um, perceived. I mean, the, the, yeah, the yeah. elements are pretty much there. The suddenly, elements are the same, but it's, suddenly that they would appear. Yeah, they would then keen, and then yeah. either. I mean, the, maybe the the order in which it's happened is is kind of maybe a little bit different. Where yeah. with the the legend of the banshee, someone then dies, but with the keen exactly, women, yeah. someone's already dead. They have appeared. Yeah, they can then do what they need to do, and I suppose it's been. In, the, in this part of the world, there's been so much um, invasion, immigration. They, they, cultures have been mixed. You know, we've got lang- we've got parts of different languages in our own language. And exactly, yeah. I suppose it would be a similar sort of thing. You know, that it would um, either that's... things would get watered down or they get muddied. Yeah, exactly. I think change. that's a part of kind of what's happened here. I mean, yeah, as you say, I'd, I'd you know, I'd also kind of flirt with the idea that you know it is um you know there is sort of the the, the fey folk um not just because they've popped up in in this one um but you know the the women in black um uh the the bigfoot even uh you know they they popped up in in that episode back in tut deer 
um, and uh, yeah, so I think that they're, the more of these things we look into, the the more that the Fey folk and that particular legend kind of crops up, um, whether yeah. it's an explanation or whether it's a linked reference. But yeah, as you say, they they definitely do sort of pop up. So yeah, I think there's there's definitely yeah there's definitely a real world origin um, that's then kind of manifested itself into. Um, into sort of something else, um, which uh, yeah, which which I could also believe and get on board with, because again, there's just too many synchronicities that that lend itself to one another for it to be just one or the other. I think it mm-hmm. has to be an amalgamation of, you know, of, of the of the two. Um, yeah, and that yeah, and that these Keenan women that were originally seen were Fey folk, um, and then normal townswomen kind of got involved and wanted to sort of do the same thing and that's how it's that kind is of, a possibility yeah that that's is how a it's kind of pulled itself apart and we've now got two different sort of things so yeah mm. I'd, I'd, with, that's where i would be with it yeah to expand on that sort of theory as well there's a really good uh tv series called american gods um yes. i think i mentioned it before uh certainly when we've been speaking yeah and this cropped like, up as well the, the the references in that yeah, yeah. it's really a leprechaun. really good that's he's, right. He's, he's a not foot, diminutive. He's like a six foot leprechaun. Yeah. Um, but and he mentions in a particular episode, I, I believe that character in particular mentions mm. banshees. Yes, he does. I don't think a banshee character actually appears, but he does no. reference them in something, from what I understand. Yeah. But yeah. That, that came up in my research. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're just um, me and Sam. We just finished watching season three, and it's mm. it's cracking. It's a really really good series, yeah. and. Uh, sad to say that there might not even be a fourth season. No, I think it has um, been cancelled, isn't it? Certainly yeah. with the network it's on at the moment, yeah. Yeah, which is bullshit. Yeah. Utter bullshit. Much like all the good shows, really. <laughs> they get a yeah, bit of traction right. and they get cancelled, yeah. Yeah. Well, same with well, Project Blue Book. That got that got two seasons. They filmed, they filmed a third one, but then it got cancelled, so they've not actually released it. Mm. They need someone to pick well, up the production to Well, this is the it. thing, though, you know, with a good TV series, it, you know, it goes on goes on for, for long enough that it mm. might turn itself into the villain, you know. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, Lost yeah. comes to mind. Lost, yeah. Um, got, you know, got even Game of Thrones, good. really, let's be honest. Even that, yeah. All of them, The Walking Dead, the happens to... Oh, yeah, I ain't watched that for a good couple of seasons, yeah. mate. I know you persisted. I'm persisting out of principle more than anything. It got <laughs> crap probably about three or four seasons ago, but I've I've devoted too much time to it to just give up now i need to see it through to the end and luckily we know there is only one more full season left so i'll, I'll watch it to the very end um and i'll hate every minute of it but out of principle <laughs> <laughs> i'll hate every single out minute of principle of i've got to watch the bloody thing so uh so <laughs> you yeah know they'll but, try and read they'll, they'll try and bring andrew lincoln back you know this don't you oh they will yeah they'll, 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 they'll try and bring him because back. of covid they've been delayed from bringing out the um the films he was going to do his own kind of standalone Walking Dead films, but because oh, of really? COVID, yeah, and he's filmed one of them I think already. But because of COVID, they're not been able to release it. So there's been too much of a gap between his exit from the show to the films coming out. I think they were going to be uh, closer together. So I think what they're going to have to do is to reignite the interest in his character. Is throw him into the final season. Yeah, I think he's actually come out and said that. Anyway. He, well, yeah, there's that, and I think he's also admitted to um regretting actually exiting the show um and that he'd done it at the wrong time so um yeah he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna come back but uh but no we gotcha. we digress um yes and well, uh that's us we've got off the fence haven't we we have got off we're the fence. thinking we're there thinking is the a same. real world mortal world origin but yeah there is a strong link to fey folk, fey as folk well. which um yeah which does uh aptly uh, lead us into I suppose the announcement for what the uh, what the next episode is going to be about, which will be, yeah, diving into uh, all things fairy and uh, and fey folk, uh, and again mm-hmm. seeing what ties we have. You know, I've mentioned some already. You know, the the, the banshee, you know, Bigfoot to an extent, believe it or not, in terms of how yeah. it's believed that they travel around, uh, lends itself to uh, you know to the fey. Um, the women in black again. There's there's um, there's references to it in in there as well. So um, yeah, again, it's also to, to to go on to something that we haven't covered before, and I think we should cover later on in another episode. Yeah. Um, 
it links very, very closely to the missing 411, I think. There's oh, a lot absolutely. of people out there that speculate yeah. I know faith folk is involved in that. Yeah, I know you and I have uh, discussed it. And yeah, yeah. there's... I mean, we'll we'll cover it when we do the episodes, but I can't think of any other explanation than, right now, anyway, than for yeah. it to be certainly at the moment as 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 we sit here recording now. Yeah, and I don't know. We've both watched um, the two seasons, uh, and that's where we both kind of landed. Um, which I know it surprised you when I said that. Mm. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, especially because we discussed that before we started this podcast, so I wasn't even as you know, deep into the whole cryptic no. thing I am now. So, uh, yeah, so we'll definitely cover that in future um, episodes, probably episodes 10 and 11. Uh, we'll do the missing 411 and uh, the, uh, the hunting. Oh, Faye then. Yeah. Yeah. So, f- yeah. So Faye and then we'll do the, the other two, probably just spoiler alert for future ones, I suppose. <laughs> but, um, I so. but, uh, but yeah, no. So the next one will be, uh, will be on, on, on the Faye. And uh, and fairies, and again, we'll, we'll find ourselves no doubt quite heavily in uh, in in parts of Ireland and and Scotland and uh, the, the British Isles. So, uh, and no doubt, as we found out in this episode, we will probably <laughs> find ourselves in West Virginia <laughs> <laughs> because we just seem to do no that. doubt. Why, no doubt. Because why? Why the hell not? But you know uh, what? We better start bloody charging them. I think we're gonna have to. Yeah, we're gonna have to start yeah, getting some sort of. Yeah, tourist board uh, fee. Yes, so. up. We're, do- we're doing some uh, good old tourism advertising for you right now. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, get a sponsorship deal. Come on, yes. we can do it. If we can get sponsored for like one episode by the <laughs> West Virginia Tourist Board, I think that would be, uh, be fantastic. But, uh, but look, that, that, uh, that covers us off on this episode. Um, I, hope you've, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I know we certainly have. It's been uh, certainly different in terms of the outcome and and you know kind of where we've landed and uh yeah and we look forward to jumping into the uh, next one you know as always we're on the socials uh, we share them on we're on facebook and uh, and instagram we've got a discord chat that we share with uh our our, uh, our brothers at uh, not another conspiracy podcast so you can check yeah. those guys out as well as uh jumping into some of our uh, our discussions and um yeah if you've got your own stories um your own tales get in touch and uh, we'd love to read them out we'd love to hear them more than anything, but we'd also love to read them out and uh share them with share them with our audience and uh the world with the world <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh yeah and on that note it's um goodbye from me it's goodbye from me and uh, always remember keep it classy great britain <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs>